if I'm okay. I don't see the light of day. Looking up to higher ground, thinking that'll be your sweet escape. These days got a schedule to romance. They say that love is a slow dance. A short bike ride to the crib, using no hands. Oh shit, it feel like I'm floating. But I'm falling with both eyes closed when I let the world spin. Testing the water, she got my nurse tense. Back when I ain't even have a purpose. I was so eager to learn some things. Anxiety bring out the worst to me. Society paint me as enemy. My niggas making it by that remedy. I'm more occasional, don't do it regularly. Back under my eyes, weighing down heavily. Mama been worried, the devil allegedly deep in the plan. Subconsciously wanted it since I was 10. I thought I was sharp on my scroll and my pen thinking dead. So mama found she did a ledge. She told me that's not who I am. But nowadays I put on for the fam, see her when I can. I'm surrounded by my feelings, I'm stuck on a fabric. Well, I bet I perish with 140 acres. She wants the horse and the carriage, a portion and portion of garbage. I talk to the mirror, I know that life's not the fairest. I lost my can, I can't pay off the bills with the blessing. I sure I relate to the Reddit page. It's feeling like money is everything. Money is everything. It's everything I need. Till I lay my eyes on you. What this is, yeah, but it feel like it's real, baby. I don't wanna pretend, no. I just wanna come clear, wanna see you again. This was everything I need, right? Not so fond of change. I'm too caught up in my way of thinking. I get by on me. No, I don't need nobody. Yes, I was so naive. Somehow I'm still all in on me. Yeah, yeah. Way too many times I let the ball drop. Now I'm Steph Curry with the wrist flicks. So they cold shoulders never defrost. No deal, but I pre floss with the money tree in a deep pot. So I'm corner wings with the rundown. Bitch, I'm all in the field with the cleats off. Everything that I want out of reach. I had the tunnel vision, couldn't see far. Negative vibes that I feed off. Got me up in the down like a seesaw. All these decoys hit the destroy. Usually keep it poised, but it's ultra violent with the power moves when I deploy. For the real ones, I wanna feel something. Looking for a sign that I might be worth your time. Yeah. When I look into your eyes, it make me feel alive. I don't know what this is. Yeah. But it feel like it's real, baby. I don't wanna pretend, no. I just wanna come clear, wanna see you again. Baby girl, you're so fine. I can't get you off my mind. Ooh girl, na na. Ooh girl, na na. Baby girl, don't need to flex. Dance to the rhythm and you do all the rest. Ooh girl, na na. Ooh girl, na na. Fill me up with dreams. The only thing I need. When I'm down, lift me up with your company. There's no telling.
Hacerte poesías, te cuentos, mi amor yeah. El amor es tan corto, olvidarte No, no, yeah. Los dos amamos de más Enamorado de tu mirar Y tú de otra Porque eres así Una aventura y yo bebé Quería ser tu romeo la última vez Te juro que la última vez Si el doble cara está de moda El egoísmo a ti te ahoga y tus mentiras eh, No dejo que eso siga eh, Prefiero un te hoy más un te quiero Que no sea de verdad Estoy bien, eso es lo que digo Pero me duele si respiro What's going on? What's going on? We're back.
You know how we do, people. Age. City. Gender. In the chat room. Come on. Big Shirley, how you doing, girl? Old bougie ass over here. Who drinks Red Bull out of crystal? I mean, who do he think he is? I mean, I'm black, he black, he mama black. Who is this old bougie dude over here drinking Red Bull out of crystal and carrying on? He must be secretly gay. <laughs> Shout out to the CIA. What's going on here? One love to the FBI, the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies in the house. Your godfather is back in the house, and the house is packed. But hey, where are my manners? For those who don't know, my name is Kevin Sammers. I'm a professional image consultant, and my job is to make sure you look good, smell great, and are the best version of yourself each and every day. But let's be real. You're here because we are about to talk some interesting stuff regarding mating, dating, and relationships. But here's the one thing we must do. We must do, we must always do. We must keep the engagement up over 50%. That means the like button. Hit the like button, folks, and keep it up. Because if we don't, you're going to hear something like along the lines of this. And if we don't want to hear a bunch of breaks and intermission, guys, let's just keep the likes up. We should be over 4,500 likes. We're looking good. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Uh, has everyone had a good weekend? Appreciate it, my friend. I hope you guys have had a good weekend. I did. I took a little siesta, a little breakage. Oh, yeah, girl, how you doing? All right, so anyway, where are my manners? <laughs> Candle of the evening. Lollabo's Laurier 62. Fragrance of the evening. Bond number nine, Shea Bond. Now, as far as fragrance connoisseurs, many people don't like Bond, but I'm going to tell you, most of the people who are black that I know love Bond, the house of Bond number nine. Bond number nine makes some of my favorite fragrances on the planet, Shea Bond. Bond number nine, signature scent in the gold bottle, um, Wall Street, and of course, Bond number nine, New York Oud. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, that fragrance is something special. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't say I don't drink enough water, here we go. <sighs> Get my water intake in there. Yeah, even got your... Got your bougie uh, remote control holder, too. That's right. Get some. All right. How are we doing, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing good. We're marching on the way to uh, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. Who would have ever thought it? We're on the way to a million. Well, I would have. Honestly. If YouTube had been doing what they should have been doing for a while ago, many more channels would have had uh, this kind of exposure. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Say a possible list of fragrances. Go on my go on my channel. I got nothing but fragrance videos up there. Fragrance and style. So let's get into it. Um, 
Shout out to the sugar baby. Shout out to the sugar babies for sure. You know, shout out to us. Hey man, I got no, I got no dishes. I got nothing but love for sugar babies. Get your money. Fair exchange is no robbery. I would prefer somebody get a sugar baby than be a sucker. Put her, put her on the payroll. Trust and believe. High value men pay for an outcome. We pay for a result. Get you some. Y'all ain't shit. Get some. All right. Let's get the swig and let's get to going. You guys see the thumbnail. And I got a question. I have a question. <laughs> oh, Dot, you're going to get me in trouble. Dot, Dot, Dot. Let me go ahead and pull this photo up. Seeing as I have, supposedly, since I have some of the most horrible images of women there are. Uh, these are all licensed, copywritten images, so get over yourselves. I asked a question, and I'm going to pose to you guys. The notion of domestication and strays. Okay? Now, what I want you guys to think about, I want you to think back to your neighborhood. And if anybody of you are pet owners, whether you're a dog or a cat owner, one of the things that human beings, mankind has done has been a, done a really good job at domesticating animals um, for our use. Mankind has a long track record of being tied to horses and dogs and cats. But all three of these, all three of these creatures have very different natures. But one thing is for sure, they they behave differently in the wild in the wild, unbroken versus domestication. The difference and what is a stray? A stray is something that was originally domesticated, but through circumstance found itself back out in the wild. Why not think start thinking about this? Because I started so many conversations we have on this channel come down to nature, chicken or egg, and just a bunch of different things, but it really made me ask a question. If, especially in our community, where you can have a woman who has a PhD, I'm a PhD. then over on this hand, this woman can have a GED. But if you look at the outcomes, the attitudes, the thought processes, even the behaviors, at a glance, you can make an argument that there's not much difference in between the attitudinal outcomes. That's not something I noticed. I mean, that's not my original. That's something that's been said for the longest. So the question becomes, that if it doesn't matter, if you have a PhD, if it doesn't matter if you have a PhD, I'm a PhD. Doesn't matter if you have an MS, a bachelor's, or a PhD. Doesn't matter if you went to uh, Spelman or Howard or Harvard or University of Alabama. If you're going to get the same kind of attitude from modern women, what's the point? You know, the point of civilizing the world in general, making a first world country, presumably is to have a higher standard of life, higher quality of living. But I think a case could be made that modern men are actually having worse outcomes than our than, than previous generations of men because you've civilized the world too much in general. I mean, civilized the world in general. To where modern women are making complaints about things that, that only exist in first world countries. I mean, think about some of the people who called in my channel. These spiritual, earthy, and being, I mean, some of, some of the weirdest stuff. And it made me really ask a question. What's going on? What's going on? Modern women. Are modern women domestics? Are modern women domesticated or strays? Are modern women domesticated or strays? And I need to think about it. Think about it in terms of a canine. Because a canine... A dog is much easier because uh, more people own dogs than cats, as far as I see. All right. So you think about it. If you've ever seen a, a prized dog, a, a high pedigree dog, where they got these dog shows, such and so forth, you can tell a dog that knows its value, its worth. 
If you've ever go to a dog show, some of these dogs have hella personalities. They'll strike a pose and look like they're moving down a runway in Milan. These dogs eat, you know, the best of the best dogs. Some of these dogs, you know, who is it? Lady Gaga's bodyguard or an assistant or somebody got shot over two French bulldogs and she was offering a half a million dollars for their return. And I'm like, did she even pay her assistant half a million dollars? No, but she offered that for her dogs. People have an unrealistic, uh, an un irrational attachment to canines. And I'm asking the question, ladies, if you were, if you were a canine, what, what breed would you be? Would you be a terrier? Would you be, uh, what would you be? Pick whatever brand of dog you would be. Some women will be more more girly dogs. Some will be more frilly. Maybe you'll be a small dog, a, a, you know, a big dog, a medium dog, whatever it is. But it doesn't matter what breed you would be. Would you be would you be a rare breed? Would you be a pedigree breed? But here's one thing. One thing that I noticed in my neighborhood where everybody owned dogs. Everybody owned dogs. Nobody in my neighborhood was going to take the dog to the vet with a $3,000 bill. Dogs took that long ride out to the country, if you know what I mean. A dog, some come up with, something happened to a dog in, an, in, the, neighbor, in the hood. That's it. Because dogs were still pets. And the funny thing is that that family that came into the neighborhood and their dog was like a really expensive dog, a high-end dog, just, just like a, a Oh, ho, 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 no, no, no. Didn't have to keep doing that, but we will. Go back to your neighborhood, east side of Oklahoma City. And I remember everybody owned a German Shepherd. Most people owned German Shepherds. You know, that, that one crazy family, that one crazy loudmouth family, they owned the pit, they owned the uh, Doberman Pinscher. This was back in the days before Rottweilers and Pitbull. The worst dog in the world at this time was a Doberman Pinscher. Okay? People owned Terrier blends, German Shepherds. All kind of thing. And then that one person came along with this Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkshire Terrier. This was this little dog that looked like curly fries on four legs. This looked like the prom queen or the, or the high school cheerleader uh, in canine form. And that dog, that, those, that, that used to be carried or walked around, you know, couldn't play with the rest of the dogs. And the funny thing is that pedigree, that, that particular breed had all its papers and everything else. When we got them dogs that came from, you know, was given away and stuff. But you know what's funny about that dog? Even though the owner typically made boiled chicken and deboned the chicken and gave it to the dog, the dog lived better than human beings. But when that dog got in heat, all that breed and pedigree stuff went right out the window. She would lay down with anybody. Let 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 Max, the German Shepherd, come running through. And I was telling a friend of mine, I remember the first time I saw a large dog 
having sex with a, a, a high breed pedigree small dog. I was like, how is that even possible? And he was wearing her ass out and she was just sitting there like, because <laughs> when she was in heat, all that mattered was that. And I was starting to think, you know what? They ain't a lot different from what we start to see. How many of you, how many of you chicks went to Spelman? Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, uh, here come Thug Nipissant. Right, right. You see where I'm going. You and Howard, next thing you know, you 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 leaving the hood to hang out with, with Nug Nug now. You domesticated, but you acting like a stray. You go off into your life and you got your PhD. I'm a PhD. And you live in all these things, but the question is modern women. Are you a dom- can, can a stray be domesticated? If you've been living life like a stray, meaning your own rules, you can do whatever you want, submit, cooperation, whatever. If it's 50-50, the world is equal, there's no rules, it's all right, cool. But now you reach, now you find out you're, you're in the danger zone. Danger zone! And you're 27 to 35, and all of a sudden now you want to turn around and become this new age modern woman. And now you now you're wanting to settle down. Now you're wanting to have me. Yes, I'd like to be married. Yes, I'd like to have two to three children. No, I don't want to have to work to pay significant bills after I'm pregnant. Yes. Or I would only like to pay about 20% of the family financial load for a lifetime. So now you want to be a domesticated, now you want to be a domesticated breed. But you've been living life like a stray. And my question is, can strays be domesticated? Ladies. Now, see, my critics will always say, well, why do you ever talk about the men? Why do you ever talk about the men? Why do you ever talk about the men? Because here's the thing. Most of these high-end pedigree dogs, they weren't males. They were females. Because a stray dog, because a, 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 cause Max, the, the, the neighborhood dogs, they knew they had Alpo, chuck wagon or whatever they knew what the world was we don't worry about the men because the men already know their outcome either they either fend for themselves or that's a wrap it's the women but here's the reality if you want a high value dog you want a high value you want a high value breed as a man you want a keith henry dog believe me he doesn't want to stray he wants a woman that's an exceptional breed that has some pedigree because that's who he wants to make his pups. Oh, that's right. That's right. Male, male dogs, sure, they want to go out and do what they do, run the streets, but they want to come back home to the doghouse. And you know what they want to make sure is in a doghouse? They want to make sure a big, oh, what's the female dog? Somebody in the chat, in the chat room, Someone give me the actual term for a female dog. Type it out, please. Because, yes, that's what they want in the doghouse when they get there. Thank you. They don't want no rescue dogs. They don't want to hear in the arms of an angel. They don't want to hear any of that bullshit. They don't want to see you get fleas and ticks from other dogs. They don't want to hear that you got mange, rabies, hell, French toast, no. They want you to be that pretty dog to get the, yeah, 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 yeah. And the question is, can a stray be domesticated? Or, or even better, are you a domestic or are you a stray? How are you living your life, modern woman? Are you living like a domesticated breed or a stray? I'm being very careful with the words I use because I know a lot of folks are going to take this out of context but the, because they're going to be annoyed with the imagery. French toast you. I've, I've heard more people talk about it. I don't listen to this content, but I look at the thumbnail and look at what he said. If you ain't listening to my content, don't make, don't make, you, if you don't listen to my content, you're in no position to judge anything I say. You're disingenuous at best. Ladies. When you went to, if you ever gone to a guy's house, do you want to see a stray dog out there? People are afraid of stray dogs. One, 
You don't know what kind of disease that dog is carrying, what what its mind state, what it's been through. Strays got a lot of problems. But can strays be domesticated? Ask yourself a question. If you were going to get a dog, ladies, would you go for a... a, a <laughs> if you're going to get a dog, would you want to go get a, a, a would you want to go to the, the breeder and get a dog? Or would you want to go on a Craigslist and just get one of these things? Like, let's go back to the, the original statement. Remember the high end Yorkie that I was talking about that was the domestic breed and she would get and she was getting down with the German Shepherd? Uh-huh. What do we call that when one breed has sex with another breed? What's the outcome? It's called a mutt, right? Mutt pups aren't very hard. I know there are going to be people pissed off. Don't get pissed. Answer the question. Can modern, can strays become domesticated? And what does that mean? Domesticated. Ultimately, that's mean a housewife. Can a domestic become a house? Can a stray become a housewife? Can a stray become a wife? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we're going there. Y'all ready? Strap in. It's about to get thick. Hit the turbo booster, Godfather. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hit the turbo booster. Ain't nobody got time for that. Here we go. Strap in. Dominus Omus. I rebuke. Ladies, question for you. If you want to know if, you're, if you can be domesticated, I got one question for you. How long does it take you to fall in love? Oh, See, I know I talk about I don't care about love and everything, but I want to ask you, how long does it take you to fall in love with a man? Because many ladies today have never even been. Last time you can talk about love is when you was in, in junior high. How long does it till you fall in love? Meaning how long till you give yourself over completely emotionally? How long do you actually how long does it take you to actually become FBI? Become inspirational. Become your man's muse. His muse. Huh? How long? Uh-oh. And why is this important? Because many modern women, you've talked about wife school and all these other kind of things. Well, I'm going to leave wife school to other things. Tomorrow, Wednesday night's broadcast, we're going to talk about how we can, how, how high, uh, modern women can better attract the kind of men they're looking for. But one of the things that's going to be really important is have you gone through modern women rehab? Have you gone from stray to domestication? Have you gone? Have you gone? If you if you brought home a if, if you brought home a dog, and that dog was 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 you had it from day one. What what would you have to do? You have to potty train it, right? Or housebreak it? You'd have to housebreak it. Send it to dog school. Uh oh. Well, wait a minute. My my question, ladies, is how long does it take you to fall in love? Are you housebroken? Uh oh, see like like if a if a if a dog barks too much, they got a trainer for that. Remember the dog whisper? Do we need modern women whisperers? Psst, psst. <laughs> Remember the modern the, the modern woman whisperer? Meaning, yes, you can have an opinion about things, but can you choose to offer it when he asks you? We're talking about actually talking about wife school before you can become a wife you got to be a girlfriend before you can become a girlfriend you got to be chosen you got to be kept you got to be kept and you got to stay on your leash oh shit yes because so many of you want to break your leash and run away and wreck your own homes oh oh god i'm going to hell i'm going to hell but you're going with me so Welcome to Godfather's modern. <laughs> what, what is it called when it when it, when you take somebody doggy daycare? Uh, you know, I don't want to call it dog school, but think about it. Think about what I'm talking about. Not etiquette courses and all those other things. That's something different. What we're talking about is actually learning how to go from being a stray to a domestic. Learning from being going a stray single woman out doing all you want to becoming domesticated. You know, like uh, a housewife, a wife period. And see, a housewife doesn't necessarily mean you don't work. A housewife means you live in a man's house. You you live in a man's house and you're his wife. Bottom line, you're in that house and you're acting like a wife. You're not in the house married, living single. 
See, many modern women today are living life in relationships like strays. You're living life like single women. You just got a relationship status. That's why you call this stuff situationships. No. Domesticated women understand that's my boyfriend. That's my fiance. That's my husband. And acts accordingly. She's not on Instagram taking selfies, thirst trapping when she's got a man. The only photos she takes and posts on Instagram are of other people and her with her man. Let me see your Instagram and I'll tell you whether you're domestic or you're stray. Gentlemen, you got a girlfriend? Go to her Instagram. First of all, why does she have an Instagram to begin with? Unless she's in social media, unless she has a, a public brand, why she got a why she got an Instagram anyway? A Facebook. She needs a LinkedIn, and that's about it. Oh, that's right. I don't deal with women that have big social media platforms. Don't do it. I pick them that way. And ladies, and there are going to be so many people going to take this broadcast so many different ways because they never ask, ask the question, why is it necessary for men to continue to talk to women about reframing the way modern women act? The question always, why you talk about women so much? Because modern women are a problem. Especially in the black community. Wife school? Wife school? Why do we need to talk about wife school? If one in four of you will get married anyway, that means one in four of you will become a wife. We need to talk about actually domesticating you, actually getting you some sort of training that you didn't get at home so you could become a wife to go through life with. To my critics and detractors, you may not like my methods, but they're rooted in sound logic. What's one of the biggest problems with strays? They don't know how to act. They, they in the house barking, making all the noise. They're jumping up on the furniture. They're tearing up stuff. They can't get along with the other pets. They, they're using the bathroom. They, they're, they're urinating and defecating in the house. They just don't act like they were raised right. So you got to train them. Domesticated women don't jump up on the on the furniture at a restaurant and start twerking. If if you go to a woman's Instagram or Facebook and 30 percent or more of her pictures are with her doing this. You got a stray on your hands. If a song comes on and first thing she want to do is go, hey, you got a stray on your hands. Don't get mad at me. Oh, 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 oh. Talk about it. Are you a domestic or are you a stray? Oh, it don't matter if you got your hair done, your hair done, nails done, everything done. done. Uh -huh, yeah, if you still walking around acting like a stray, stray you are. No no quality, no quality uh, dog owner says, you know what? I want to get my high end male dog out and I want to breed him with some strays. Yeah, that's what we want to do. That's why I want to ask that one mother. Do you how confident are you that when your sons are ready in age that they're going to be able to find quality young women to date from pick from? She had to say because uh -uh, because the, the mothers aren't raising their kids, their daughters to be domesticated. Good partners. That's the ultimate thing. Are modern women raised to be wives? Housewives. Can you live in the house with the man in peace? Or are you barking at all hours of the night? <laughs> God damn. Man come up to the house and he's like, damn, I know I should have got home sooner because I get home and she going to be and peed all over the place. Think about it. You ever know a dog owner? One of the worst things they want to do is they don't, they got to get home because if they don't let the dog out, they're going to just, uh-huh. Ladies, like it or not, 
Domestication is your friend. Part of being domesticated is being feminine, cooperative, cooperative, submissive. That's respectful cooperation. Having an ear and a heart to want to do what's good for your man and the outcome. I watched A Beautiful Mind last night and he was talking about Adam Smith's bargaining problem. And he's like, Adam Smith said that the best outcome for a group happens when everyone is doing what's in their own best interest. The John Nash character played by Russell Crowe said, Adam Smith is incomplete. The best outcome is when everyone's doing what's best for themselves and the group. See, that's the thing. Ladies, a domesticated woman, a domesticated person understands that what she wants to do comes second to what's best for the group, the union. And we can say you don't like the way I talk about it, especially in the black community. That's, that, to my non-black viewers, give me a few minutes. I'm going to have a family discussion. Come on. Without black family, you can't have black nothing. And right now, when you talk about the black community, it's black women, black children, and black men over here somewhere. When you got organizations talking about they're dedicated to the principles of, of uh, disrupting or destroying the modern nuclear family, you can't have a black community. So if you keep asking yourself why, I think it's interesting that so, many, so much fuss happens for men talking about women when women have been talking about men for 50 years. Daytime TV, magazines, movies, uh, everything else. And it's like, wait a minute. 50 years women have been talking about their problems with men, but for a couple of years, men on YouTube have been talking about something and you're acting like, well, why do they keep doing it? Shut the French toast up and understand that they're doing it because there's a problem. Because the men who are marrying age are not seeing women worth marrying. In a straw poll I did, I asked, what percentage, gentlemen, what percentage do you feel like that there, there's enough women, uh, a, a suitable women to, to wife. 65% of men said no. And whether you like the way they said or don't like the way they said, at the end of the day, it's like, do I want to bring this person? Do I want to try to get with this person and try to make a life? Do I want to get with this person and try to make offspring? Or is this person going to be so unruly to where any life with them is going to be chaos? Then why make children with that person? If you, if men are saying, why would I take this person? If I know, if I feel that there's a better than 50%, there's a 50% chance she's going to leave. And she's going to leave with my kids. And this and that. If you're wondering why men are shying away from marriage or relationship, especially average guys, I'll tell you why average guys are. Because average guys know that they're not women today's number one choice. Almost 100% of women, and I... The, I take it back. The large percentage of women, I would say 80% or more, want tr truly want men in the top 10%. Nobody wants to be second place. Nobody wants to be second place. And no one wants to take some woman who's been, an, who's been out here and strayed out. She's been a stray. She's been running through the neighborhood, catting around with everybody else. And then you think, because she brings somebody else's puppies, this dude's supposed to? No, man. No, no, no. So, gentlemen, ask yourself a question when you start talking to women. Ask her, ask, when, you, when you meet a woman the next time, ask her in a, in a very direct way, are, are you a domestic or a stray? And let her explain it, because it's my firm belief that today... You're going to want to watch Wednesday's broadcast because today the whole notion of cold approaching and this and that for most guys, that's out the door because of the, the environment. And ladies, if you're not getting approached by the kind of men you want, you're going to want to turn in on Wednesday because it is going to be on women to make themselves more appealing to the kind and caliber of men they wish they had in their lives and then compete for that man's ring compete for that man's last name that's the difference between over here and everywhere else everywhere else tells you that you're fine 
tells you that there's no problem. Over here, tell you that men want the things you want. Men want to marry. Men want children. Men aren't taking bad deals. Men aren't taking bad deals. Too much information out there. And if you have an attitude of a stray, a strong, independent, I don't need no man stray. You know what? I am a strong, independent woman. <laughs> that's what you are. Flash, Hear my womanly roar. Oh. Yeah! And the only thing you bring to the table. The jammas are great. Don't get upset. Women, if you're mad that men seem to be preoccupied with sex and always talking about sex, 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 well, that's a direct reflection of that's what they, that's all the value that modern women seem to bring to the table. Is there sex? Ask them, what do you bring to the table? Me. And inevitably, it comes down to sex. So you don't like to be objectified. Well, you've got a marketing problem, ladies. And men are starting to ask these questions. But the main question is, think about how simple it would be, gentlemen. If you rolled up on a woman and said, are you a, a stray? Are you, are you a stray or are you a, a, a domesticated? Meow, 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 meow. The difference between a stray and a domesticated woman is very simple. But you know what? Maybe I don't talk about. Maybe I'm just making up shit. Maybe it's it's all the men's fault. You know, I don't know. We're going to open the call lines because I really want to understand why so many women feel like, why do you feel like that you're not getting the outcome you want? Because I'm listening to my critics and detractors and they seem to really be focused on everything other than, oh, I forgot. They don't listen to my message. So they can't tell you what I'm saying. But what they don't have is a bunch of single eligible men over there looking for a domesticated woman. Not a stray. Let's talk about it. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. Money work. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. Si me quiero educar. Dormir en algún lugar. Un lugar para trabajar. Ladies only. Y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el putin entero Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios todo lo ve Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos que el dinero Ya lo veré, yo vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De donde vengo ni como voy Money work Yo digo las cosas como son, no quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón, porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves, sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés, ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de donde vengo ni como wey Money work Get us some eggs y'all El mundo quiere dinero Money work Se arregla con dinero Big Shirley Money work De corazón De corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz Vaya de corazón De corazón All right, here's how this is going to go. If you're going to you see the disclaimers, this is how this is going to work. Look, I'm willing to have the conversation um but we're going to keep it respectful. You got to be on the Zoom call. So uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah, if you're not, you got to get on camera so I can see you. Yep. Nope. You got to keep your camera on. Uh, you might as well. Nope. Got to keep your camera on. You got to go. No, I got it set to where your camera's going to stay on. Huh, you can't turn your camera off. That man. Yeah, you can't turn your camera off in the uh, Zoom call. It's set. That's the way it is. You can ask it. So, domesticated or stray? Hello, Asia. Hi. Um, you're going to need to turn your camera. It's rotated. It's rotated? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're going to need to turn it 90 degrees. Okay. Let me fix it. Yeah, just turn it 90 degrees. Yep. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? I'm 29. All right. So, what do we got? Domestic or stray? Um, I personally don't. I'm sorry. Am I talking while you're talking? No, no. Go ahead. Unless you have YouTube on in the background. Uh, it's muted in the background. All right. Um, personally, I would say that a stray can't be domesticated. I feel like once you go from domesticated to stray, just in the way that you described it, mm -hmm. I think it would be hard to go back to domestication. I think there's a reason why people leave the whole idea of domestication. Um, and if you're raised in a household, normally with two parents, your mother and your father, usually your father, if you're a female, is the one instilling like, you know, for you to be a domesticated woman. But mm -hmm. I feel like if you do stray from everything that you've been told not to do, mm -hmm. and you rationalize it, it's kind of hard to go back to that. I mean, even if someone is uh, given the opportunity to go through some sort of program. So you think, so you, so you think once they're, once they're there, they're done. There's no hope. Um, no, I mean, even if you try to be domesticated again, that stray is always going to be in you. And it mm -hmm. only takes one thing to trigger you okay. to go back. Because if you rationalize it once, you can rationalize it twice. Uh oh, so do you want to be married? Yes. Do you want any children? I do. I'm open to it. Open to it. Okay. Uh, how many would you like to have? I think two or three is good. All right. Yeah, uh, you know how I ask my questions. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant with the first kid? Um, significant as in like over fifty percent. Well, or significant meaning 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 that significant means if you if you don't make money, the family is really impacted. No, I mean I don't expect to like have kids and not work. I mean, okay. I don't. Well, here's, a, don't here's, an, e here's, a, here's an easier have... question to fathom. What percentage of mm -hmm. the overall family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for for your lifetime? I think fifty percent is fair. Okay, so that means so we're on the same page. If you don't work, if you lose your job, mm -hmm. the family's at serious risk. Um, meaning if you have a four, if you have a, a, a table or a seat or mm -hmm. you have a table and the table has three legs, it can still stand. Correct. No. As long as the weight, huh? Yeah, it can. A, a table with, over pretty no, easily. No, no, as long, no, 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 no. A table with three legs can stand. Mm -hmm. I do have a three legged table, so I understand what you mean. Okay. Yeah, it it's, a, it's a well-defined premise. Dogs mm -hmm. with three legs can, I mean, can stand, is it? but there are no such thing as a two-leg table. Right. In a family, if you have 50%, that drops you to a two-leg table. Mm -hmm. You want to be responsible for the family standing or falling. Um. Okay, I got to rethink what I said then. So yeah. <laughs> I would be open to kids if I have a kid one max. <laughs> I'm okay. just thinking of um income. 
Um, yeah. Normally, I think it's it's. I think the most important thing to do when you partner up with someone is to live off of one income, and I don't mean like one person pays all the bill. I mean, I like, get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. What state do you live in? Um, Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, I'm from Oklahoma, so leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to ask some questions. What is life if you if you chose not to get married or have children? What would you be doing? What What are you going to? What's life going to be? Um, I don't really see that as my life. Um, I think. Well, I'm just I asking. Start, I don't. I mean, not everybody's. I'm just asking. Have you thought about it? Is my question. Um, I, my thought is I refuse to allow that. Honestly, allow what? I, myself to not be i guess a partner to someone i think i was put on this earth to be a partner to someone i don't think i was put on this earth just to take up space okay all right so let me get back to you because i think you're misinterpreting my question my my mask ultimately if you're 29 you want to have i'm gonna come back to you i'm gonna come back to you because there's some things i think many of you ladies don't really you say one thing but you don't put numbers to it and move with a sense of urgency. Hold on. I'm going to come back to you and put you back in the call queue because I think many women realize that without a, without a relationship, it's kind of pointless. Okay, uh, what's your name? Unmute yourself. My name is Keandra. Yeah, that's not what the title said. Keandra, okay. That's um, <laughs> okay. That's okay. Uh, so, domestic astray, what do we got? I want, I want to say I'm domesticated. Okay. How old are you? I'm 30. Any children? No, sir. Do you want to be married? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. I appreciate it. How many kids would you like to have? I would like to have one. This, this one? Why just yeah. one? Just knowing how, uh, what, what I make, and then I don't necessarily need someone that makes... 75,000 or more just just knowing how what I make and what I can the type of man I want and I can have I think we'll be fine with just one child okay to support well I would tell you as a only child being a being an only child it sucks man it really does you got nobody to play with and all that other kind of stuff but um all right so at what age how long what's your longest relationship Three years. How long ago did that end? 2012. Huh? That's almost 10 years ago. Yeah. And that would have made you, what, 21? Yes. What's going on? I mean, when I was 25, I tried again. Um, I moved out. I kind of did it backwards. I moved someone in versus, I guess, doing it. You right moved way. somebody in? Yes. Okay. How long did you guys last? Uh, like nine months. Okay. And why did you guys end up splitting? Um, He wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. Um, He just wasn't being a man. Okay. I was of everything. Well, that kind of that kind of lets you know that you moved him in, though, right? Yeah, and I expected something different, and I guess just I expected something different. All right, and you guys are together nine months. Yeah. So, have, when's the last time you actually dated somebody longer than six months? It's. 2000, 2017 to 2019, I dated someone. Seriously. 2017 to 2019, yeah. That's two years. Yeah. And why didn't you guys work? We, I was, I don't think I was mature enough to be in a relationship and neither was he. Um, we argued over petty things a lot. But that was less than a year, that's less than two years ago. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think your relationship skills are like? Uh, 
I think I'm um I think I'm a, a little too probably clingy. Um, too clingy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. And then that's pretty. I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. I think I show. So, I show. So, um, mm -hmm. I guess my love language a little too hard sometimes, and then that kind of. See what I'm trying to hear is a woman who has learned from her previous relationship and is on third base, rounding home towards marriage. And I'm not hearing any progression. I'm hearing that you still, you're still at bat trying to get on first base. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little. A little? If the goal is a home run, is a marriage, right? Yes. And you can't stay in a relationship long enough to get engaged, how do you get married? I don't know. I need help. Well, okay. Well, this is the whole domestic versus straight thing. See, domesticated women don't have this problem. Strays have this problem. You don't have to be a ratchet to be stray. It's lacking the ability to be pick or be picked well by a man of substance and value and then maintaining a relationship. So what yeah. suggestions? Uh, this is what the schools and all that stuff are for because what suggestion would I have for you? Yes. Well, I mean, I don't sense that you really um, are being honest or being really self-aware. I mean, what kind of reflection have you done on your relationship history? No, I definitely know that is me, and I take full accountability for it. Okay, what does that? But what does that look like, though? Readjustment to my attitude and how I address things, and how how you how how are you going to do surgery on yourself? See, you ladies say these things. I take full accountability. No, you don't. Full accountability means you're going to actually get somebody in here to help you address this. That's full accountability. I'm, I've am i been overeating and I have a poor diet and I lack discipline. That means you hire a personal trainer, you hire a nutritionist, somebody to help you do it because you don't have the discipline and the strength to do it yourself. Would that not show a commitment? Yeah, definitely. All right. But see, here's the problem I see with a lot of you ladies. You think that time is going to last forever. You're 30 how old? 31? I'm 30. At what time do you think the clock's going to run out? I mean, I think it's running out right now. Like, well, I already. All I right. But if, are you are you really a different person at 30 in a relationship than you were at 25? At tw from 25 to now, yes. Most definitely. All right. Then, then how did you get into a relationship with somebody from 2017 to 2019 and you were still having arguments about the similar stuff? No, the, the arguments weren't similar. They were, they were different. Uh, with the first guy, it was more so like just help with some things, just simple things around the house. More so with this guy, it was more so him concerned about me going out and you going out where out with my friends straight living okay that's thank you i mean y'all dance around it but you're still living like a single woman okay All right. did i miss something no but you are you say i take full accountability okay if that's the case have you have you developed or learned anything? Yeah, I'm different. And then a couple of questions I ask, you're just, you're not. 
but it took me to ask you that. If I hadn't picked up this phone call or this video call, you'd have gone through life thinking what? That you're taking full accountability and you're tracking the right way. With just a few questions about your previous relationship, because you haven't, you, you're bringing, you're with somebody and he has an issue with you going out. Why were you going out? And were your friends single, meaning had no boyfriends? Yes. Thank you. Remember last bro last broadcast, ladies? Single women keep women single. Don't allow your single friends to manipulate you out of a restaurant. Your godfather is right again. Uh, I think I think this is where counseling therapy and getting involved with somebody who can actually help you work through what's going on with you. Because you ladies are in charge of this process and you 30, next thing you know, you're going to look up be 35 and you're going to be out of time. You don't have a lot of time at 30. And if you're still moving like in your 20s, well, all right. I mean, I feel, I feel sorry for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of young women because they, they, she's not a bad person, but the world today does not require women like her to really critically analyze themselves. Doesn't require them at all. It's just like, all right, you're fine. It's good. No problem. And that's not how this works. Uh, your audio, is, your microphone's not connected. Your name says beauty. Your audio's not connected. She can't hear me. She's not paying any attention. I don't. Can you see me? Go self you. Let me turn my camera on. Your audio is not on. She's not. You lady, you. <laughs> Your audio is not on. Mm -hmm. I am too. Now it's there. You're supposed yes. to. <clears throat> How are Hello. Your audio is not on. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's on. Turn off the you TV. Okay. I know. It's on. Okay. Turn off the TV. Turn off the YouTube in the background. Because when your audio is doing this, it loops. Okay. All right. Uh, hi. Hi. Your first name? My first name is Ryan. All right. What do you got for me? Domestic or stray? Am I domestic or stray? Well, yeah. I'm definitely not a stray. But right. to answer your question. Are you married? No, I'm not. Any children? No children. How old are you? I'll be 34 this year. Okay, right, go ahead. As far as can a stray be domesticated, I'm going to say yes, because any woman that wants to be anything for any man can change her ways. Um, it doesn't matter about her past. I feel like if she's driven enough to be the traditional woman or the woman that the man expects her to be, that she definitely can. Hmm. Well, I'm going to challenge that. <laughs> I know. I'm a very like inquisitive person. So well, I, but if that's if that's what if what you say is true, then why are so many women unmarried, unhappy, and alone? I think it's because people don't understand their mate's love language. Like I think that you get, things, hold on, hold on. Before you get a mate, you got to get a date. Right. You got to get a date before you can get a mate. Absolutely. So you're saying that a woman can, women can, or women can change anything they want to. Then why aren't they doing it? I just don't think that they're seeing enough candidates who, I mean, women want, you know, faithful men 
the majority of them. Some of them will accept, you know, Hold on. The men See, are notice, notice, notice how when I asked a question about why the women aren't getting what they get, you automatically go to blaming random men. The women want faithful men. You got to get a man before you can worry about faithfulness. And seventy, and, and even in our stats, seventy-two percent of black men are, are admit to be being faithful. Just like seventy-six percent of black women. So can we stick to the majority of people, please? Okay. I think it's because they're not willing to do the work because they may feel like, oh, well, I'm lowering my standards or I'm being something that I don't want to be. And maybe that's why. Then that contradicts what you just said. You said if a woman wants to, she can change herself for anybody. But then yeah, that's, what I, don't. that's so, the main word that I'm using. They have to have you know, have the willpower to want to do that. Oh, okay. And then it's funny that when they don't want to do it, it's because something, they're lowering their standards. Uh, they're the one that's single. I'm just speaking from a general standpoint in terms I, I get, of- I get it, but the, the standpoint still, your standpoint empowers women and gives them no fault or accountability for their outcomes. I disagree. Really? I asked you, why aren't they getting what they want? Well, they could feel like they're lowering their standards. That's a positive or a negative for a woman. To lower your standards? Mm-hmm. The implication is they're higher. The implication is they have more worth. No, I'm not implying that by any means. Well, I'm lowering just- your standard, lowering your standard means that it's an unbalanced deal yes okay use whatever word you want it's not an equal exchange who does more complaining about relationships today men or women i would have to say women (laughs) i mean that's just in my daily life what I hear, you know, but, but that's my point though. That's my point. And if women could, could do all these things and they have such, and they don't want to lower their value, then why can't a woman get a man that's, why can't women get the outcomes you say they're capable of getting? Because I think they're reaching for guys that are kind of out of their league because they don't want to take their appearance, their appearance, um, seriously, they don't care if they're overweight or underweight. I mean, the mentality is everybody wants just accept me for who I am, which is not good, but that's the reality. So, and it is sad. So, but according to what you said at the beginning, women can do whatever they set their mind to. Absolutely, if they want to. If they want to be a traditional woman, Right. for whomever the man that they're seeking out. Do you really believe that? Just, you really believe you really believe that. That people can't that people can change. Well, so so you mean if somebody, that's, no no that women can do whatever they want if they set their mind to. Let's just, let me challenge that. So if a man wanted to be so you believe that men are equally as capable of getting whatever they set their mind to. 100%. I think everyone Either sex is capable of reaching whatever it is that they set out to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. And you disagree with that? Okay, well, tell me why. Well, because, I mean, how old are you again? I'll be 34. Because I live in reality. Life has limitations. Life is about trade-offs and choices. And in your world, your construction, that the people are only limited by the extent of what they're willing to do and whatever. If I wanted to run a 4240, there is no way I can do it no matter how I set my mind. I am limited. How do you feel how do you feel that you're limited if there's a Because already- I cannot physically run a 4240 at 52 years old. No matter how hard you trained. No. Okay. And tell me how in your world it's possible. 
like I said, if people put the work in, whether if that's counseling or self-educating. So people can break. So people, and this is what I mean. And this is part of the problem. You ladies keep this delusion that anything is possible as long as you're willing to wish upon the star and do the work. And I just gave you a, a four to 40 is world class sprint time. And you're really asking me, well, you mean you can't? Are you serious? Well, yes, I'm serious and sorry that you think that I shouldn't be, but that's why I'm calling I'm not understanding who, uh, but I'm trying to understand why you think that's possible. Because I'm just a believer in people, I guess. And people have limitations. So because you believe in people, they can defy physics. They can defy age. A 4240. So if I wanted to so if I wanted to run a nine second hundred yard dash, I could do that. I think that you could, but okay, let me ask a question. Holy ask a shit. Question? Can I ask a question? Do y'all believe shame, insults, guilt, and this is the big end right there, people. The need to be right. This woman just said that I asked, could I run a nine second, 100 yard dash? And she says, I believe you could. You can ask the question. You certainly can. Clip it, put it on World Star. I'm sorry? I'll make you famous. Go ahead, ask a question. So if a man has been a dog in his relationship or his marriage and he has some sort of revelation or what have you wants to gain his, his wife or woman's trust, you mean to tell me he can't change from being a dog that he once was from his past? Number one, we're talking about women. Number two, yes, you can choose to not continue to have sex with other people because that's a choice. But those two, but that and running a nine second, hundred yard dash aren't even close to being in the same universe. One is simply a choice to exercise sexual discipline. The other is breaking the laws of physics. Okay. Your point is clear. Okie dokie. Why did I let that go on? Because it is a perfect example of what is wrong in, our, in so many Western cultures today. We are so, we have given women so much incentive to believe fantasy and fairy tale that if you want it, you can do it. it there are no limitations to where even in the face of physical, in, in the face of physical reality, verifiable physical reality it's still possible how do my critics and my detractors how do you expect men to adequately partner couple with and family plan with uh, uh. So guys, just wish upon a star. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Big Shirley, Big Shirley, guess what? I see you, uh, Aisha, your microphone's not connected. Big Shirley. All you have to do is wish upon a star. Makes no difference who you are. 
you can get into that bikini. Yes, that two piece. Not a not a Popeye's two piece, but that two piece. You can get there. Yes. You can even get that navel ring. Ah ha ha. Big Shirley, there's hope for you. You can actually get to that dress size two or four with a six pack. Not a six pack of Coca-Cola. You can get there. You can do it, Shirley. You can do it. When you wish upon a star makes no difference. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I am well. How old are you? Awesome. I just wanted to say that I feel like um How old are you? Oh, 30. I just turned 30. All right. What are you So, uh stray or domestic? Domesticated. All right. You married? Yes. Cool. Go ahead. And so um, we've been married for almost five years this year. And I personally feel as though I have a lot of friends that are um, unmarried. And I listened to the previous podcast as far as like, you know, cutting off those single friends and all of that. And so I've been in the process of doing that. And so it's really hard to turn like a stray into um, a <laughs> housewife because they want all of these things that they from a man and they're not built to be able to handle them does that not, make sense they're not built to be able to handle no mm. what do you mean um and i'm not i don't want to be rude okay i don't, I don't uh, please, please they don't mind being rude to men they're, they're, they're trashing beyonce and uh destiny's child for cater to you go ahead be rude <laughs> But I'm just being honest, like, you know, I've had a lot of friends or whatever. And so everybody talks about what they want and what they feel like they deserve. But mm -hmm. no one is willing to put into the work of like what it really takes to have this um, this lifestyle and this relationship that, for example, that I've built with my husband after like almost 14 years of us knowing each other and getting to know each other and only five years of marriage, you know? And so they don't understand. It's not like you just wake up one day and everything is just amazing. Like that's just, it's ignorant to even be the the norm. And I've watched you these past couple of um, months or so. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, and well, I'm I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'm pretty, what'd you say? I'm Asha, not, I, not Asha. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, well, here's the thing. Um, keep living your life. It's, it's going to be hard to, to domesticate a stray. Yeah, keep selling anniversaries. Keep, keep celebrating your anniversaries. And, you know, you can't make somebody see what you see. Uh, but every year, you'll keep getting more and more things towards your 10 year, your 15, your 20 year, and they'll just end up dealing with dating and having other relationships. I mean, good for you, though. Good for you. I'm going to keep on moving to the next person. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So we got, um, here we go. Harmony. Oh, you left. Bye, Harmony. Yeah, you got, y'all got to have patience. Harmony, wave your hand. I can barely see you. So. Hello. There we go. That's better. Hi. I can't hear you. If possible, um, can I not be like on the? Uh, can you hear me well, now? I don't think that's. Hold on. I don't think that's possible. Now? Well, not on this can link. You have to go to the other side. You have to go to the Zoom call. Go to the Zoom call. This will put you on the screen. Um, mama say, Mama say, Mama kusa. Mama say, Mama say, Mama kusa. Uh, yeah, well, that's a name. Audacious. Uh, okay, okay. We're going to admit everybody and put everybody back in. I'm going to say, 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 All right, so we're going to put Audacious. And then Asia, you're back. Asia, you'll be back in just a second. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hello. Audacious. Audacious, yes. Is that your real name? It's not. It's my nickname. My name's D. 
Oh, okay. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 30. 30. All right. Yeah. Domestic or stray? <laughs> okay, here goes. Um, <laughs> I have to be completely honest. So I would categorize myself in the stray category. Why um, are you Straight and cat. I don't say that with any sense of pride at all. Okay. It's kind of been my lifestyle by kind of by survival, you know. I've been single for a long time. I've been forced to just kind of take care of myself and do what I have to do. Do you have any children? I do not. So you've been single for a long time, meaning you're Six unmarried. Years unmarried and you've been forced that's a strong word um and i say i say forced because um i blame my upbringing to be honest mm -hmm. i of course i want to take full accountability for myself but i i raised them myself i was forced to grow up at a really young age and i think because of that i developed a lot of masculine um characteristics and personality that i i've had to kind of fend for myself and i feel like i don't know how to be feminine i don't know how to get along with men although i do get approached by a lot of so, high uh, value men uh, i don't know how to keep them okay okay so one <laughs> uh did you go to college i did yes all right um what did you did you graduate? I did. Yeah, I graduated. I've been working in my field for three years now. What's your field? Marketing. All right. So, were your mother and father unmarried? No. Okay. Do you, do you, how many children does your mother have? Oh, here we go. Um, my mom has eight children. So, how many different men? Quite a few. I don't want to put her on blast, but uh, I've never really seen a successful relationship or successful marriage growing up. Do you know your siblings? I do, yeah. We all grew up in the same home. So eight kids by a lot of guys. What's your longest None relationship? None of us have kids. Sorry. What's your longest relationship? My longest relationship was four years, and that ended about six years ago. So four years, six years. Okay, that's 10. Okay. Uh, how many sisters? I have six sisters. Six sisters out of eight kids? The six sisters or seven? Uh, one brother? That's right. And where is he at in the birth order? Young. I'm the second oldest. How old is the youngest? I have twin sisters. They're, seven, they're both 17. They're the youngest? Yeah, that's right. Have you had any therapy or counseling? I am currently in therapy. Okay. Yeah, so, and that's been going so on for the last two years. So if your last relationship was six years ago, and so four years, yeah. why did the four-year relationship end? Oh, okay. So you had a segment the other day about uh, women who run away. Oh, that spoke to me. He was actually a really good guy. Um, who in, I was who like ended super it? Super picky, and I wasn't who, ready. And who he ended was it? Who ended it? Me. Who ended it? Who ended the relationship? I did. I ran away. He's now married with kids. And why did you run away? <laughs> I was being picky, always thinking like there's something better out there. There's more for me. So you guys were in a four-year monogamous committed relationship. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, and then since then, you've not had it, dated anyone seriously? Since then, I've met a lot of... Um, Have you dated anyone seriously? Not not longer than six, six or seven months, really. All right. So, um, well, I mean, obviously, you know that the issue is in the mirror. Um, but... Your mother stopped raising you 12 years ago. This is on you. Right. So, I mean, your mother didn't pick your four-year relationship 
or the previous or the guys you choose to cycle in and out of. Um, I honestly would think that becomes a, a, an excuse for a lot of our women. Poor upbringing, that means, if, that means nobody can expect anything of you. I think it's bullshit most of the time. Because if you take this to a second or third world country, there are people who have far worse situations who actually make right. those. So you say you were forced to do this way? I'm talking to a woman who's articulate, college educated. What state, what state do you live in? I'm Canadian, actually. I'm in okay. Toronto. All right. All right. Canada. All right. So what, what's the plan for life, though? Okay. So to answer your question, can a stray be domesticated? I want to say yes. Yes, absolutely. And I want to be that person, 100%. How long have you been in therapy? I want a marriage. How long have you been in therapy? Almost two years. Uh, Is there any clinical diagnosis? No, not not anything besides. So so therapy is supposed to have a graduation date. Right. Therapy also becomes another relationship another enabling thing a crutch i talked to too many therapists and psychiatrists psychologists and therapists to you want to you say a woman can be domesticated you want to be this thing okay and where are you planning on actually putting these premises into practice that's that's a very good question yeah it is that's Um, why i asked it (laughs) Well, for starters, I plan to put myself out there a little more. Um, I feel like I've worked on a lot of my inner issues, which stem from uh, aggressiveness, bad communication. So I, I think I'm ready to kind of get my when was last time you actually had a, When was the last time you had a date? Ooh, <laughs> before COVID. So we're talking okay. 2019. So, sorry, let me go ahead and put this off. Man. We're talking November. So, how do you, so, but you're a healthy woman. Yes, who is also very much afraid. Of sex? Or was. I was. Just afraid to fail, you know? I was really afraid to put myself out there, to be honest. And I think that's the game plan for me now is... Um, just taking that leap of faith and knowing that I have... Is Toronto locked down? Pardon? Toronto locked down? Is Toronto locked down? Oh, yes. We are still on a lockdown, but the same... I have clients in Canada. I think you talk too much. I think you talk too much and you overthink things. I do. Yeah. Because it's safe to be in your own head. You don't need any more therapy. You need you need to watch less videos, less YouTube, and more people. Yeah. You need to go have some sex. <laughs> I was actually celibate for a really long time, so uh, I'll write that down. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. I'm, I'm just saying you need to get out because all this talking, you got to see how this is working with a person. Right. Because you can have all the answers, but if it doesn't work, how can you learn how to dance and be a good waltz or tango partner on videos on somebody's couch? You got to get on the dance floor. Right. I think. I agree. I agree. So you haven't been, people have asked you out since the pandemic and you've turned down every date? Yeah. Well, then you get exactly what you get, you know? And I get it being afraid to fail, but I think you should be afraid of dying alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, if you want to live right. this way, um, no. fear no, is not a good I'm way to live. 40 and oh. single. All my friends are married. Every single last one of my friends are either married or in long-term committed relationships. Yeah, but so. you, know what the ver- you know what the first tip was for me the first tip off for me with you how tall are you five five dress size um 
<laughs> so my BMI definitely says I'm overweight. I'm a nine, nine dress size. How much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? Ooh, like 180. Little linebacker. <laughs> I, I, I left. And, why, I left and what tip and what tipped allowed this off was your, your name. Audacious. Audacious. Yeah. Um, Self-awareness, gratitude, humility, and empathy. I'm going to leave that right there. See, today we told so many women because they went to college and because they can string together some, you know, polycelibate words, you know, that it's all good. And far too many of our, our women are going to find themselves in a position just like that. Like, no reason to not really be out there. It's just, I'd rather just talk because you don't have to put yourself out there. And far too many women today are just terrified. And I get the being terrified of failing. I do. Um, but you're still going to have to try. Um, let's do this. Okay, so I see you, Allie. That, okay. Grace, I see you. I'm going to put you back. Harmony, unmute yourself. Or oh, you got to be on, you don't have to be on yeah. the camera. Uh, Harmony, Live. you don't have to be on camera, but you, uh, on YouTube, but you got to be on the screen. I got to be able to see you. Will I be on? Nope. No? Nope. Okay. I'm, I'm getting okay. my faith in you. How old are you? Just turned 23. 20 what? 23. All right. So domestic or stray? Now, you're not going to be on YouTube. Super nervous. Sorry. Okay. I've been watching your content for some time. And I wanted to answer the question that you posed for earlier about how long it takes to fall in love. Okay. And I wanted to know, like, how but before you do that, before you do that, I do have a question on the table. Domestic or stray? Mm, I honestly feel like I don't want to categorize myself as domestic or stray because I see myself as a like a human being and I feel like it's a little dehumanizing. I don't, I don't belong on but, the streets and well, uh, I've definitely grown up in a home. I understand something. You can be mm -hmm. a human being all you want to, but you need to learn this and early on. We do fit in categories. And that's a first world, that's a first world connotation. It's like, I don't want to, I'm a human being. Okay, that's the show. Everyone else is playing along. So you can't, you want something from me, right? Um, you want an interaction? You want me to, you want to talk, you touch base and say what you want to say about the one topic, right? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to know more about. Well, then that's on. right. You want something from me. I was thinking like, I don't want. Huh? Mm -hmm then I expect what I want from you. Understood. That's fair, right? No, yeah, that is fair. And and why I did that, folks, is that is the primary breakdown between men and women today. So many modern women, because they feel a certain way, they, they think they can just play the game now they want to, but then you still want men to do the things men have always done. Well, men are starting to say, I made the ball. I'll take the ball and go home. Because if you're not going to play, fair, neither am I. So, now we're back. Okay. The question you wanted to answer was what? Um, how long does it take to fall in love? Uh, after you answer domestic astray. Um, what is a domesticated woman and what is a stray woman? Like, have what are the been, attributes and the traits? Have you been paying attention to the broadcast? Loosely, yeah. Well, unfortunately, you should have been paying attention to the broadcast. What is the domesticated uh, woman canine like, what is versus the, the stray canine? Woman? What are the big? Have you ever owned a pet? Yes, several. What's in? There you go. It's the whole premise. You actually, 
Interestingly enough, I actually did adopt a stray cat. Her name was Precious. Mm-hmm. We had her for like. Have you ever had a domesticated cat? Yeah, she was a stray. She was like an alley cat, and we have had. You ever had? Have you ever had a purely domesticated cat? Um. Yeah, I guess so. Like the kittens that she would have. Uh huh. It's a generational thing. I feel like it does kind of relate to like relationships. If you have women and men who are raised in family unit households who grow up with parents who are married in healthy relationships, they too can lead healthier lives in their relationships. Are you in a relationship? I used to be. Were you raised with your mother and father? What was that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Were you raised with your mother and father? Yes, I have two fathers and a mother. Two fathers and a mother, meaning a stepfather and a biological father? Yes. Do you want to be married one day? Yes. Do you want children? Yes. Any siblings? Yes. How many? I have four younger siblings. We're five years, like from me to the youngest is a five-year gap. All right. Well, if you want to be, and what kind of wife, and and what kind of, you want children yourself, right? Yes, ideally. How, How many would you like to have? I definitely want to like conceive one on my own and possibly adopt. There's lots of kids in America who need adoption. Mm. Uh, Do you Mm. plan on working? Was that a good mm or a bad mm? I can't tell. Depends on who's paying for them. That's very true. Because most men want to put food in the mouth of their own offspring. Yes. So imagine the quality of man who can. No, 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 no. Give me that bullshit. Don't start that. Oh, okay. I will, no, you're not going to dismiss that men want to feed their own offspring by calling them less quality. I didn't, you I'm, want to go adopt kids? That's fine. But I'm tired of you women passing judgment on men because men want to take care of their own biological offspring. That's natural. Yes, of course. Many, many, yeah. I've seen all across the spectrum of those who like struggle in childbearing and like child raising it doesn't matter it doesn't matter matter. struggling childbearing or not you said i want to give birth to one and adopt one and i said hmm that means hopefully you find someone who believes what you believe but most men because most men want to see their own children there's an active debate going on right now between being stepfather versus your own kid and adopting is like being a stepfather if your wife can give birth yeah that's very true i think you know i might have a little bit of a skewed like view of it because I was I think raised. You're, I think you're a first world hippie girl, and that's cool. You can do that when you're raised in a in a in a in an environment like you. But when you get out here in the world and have to take care of yourself, you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with some of these real notions, like this whole notion of falling in love. Have you ever been in love? Once. At what age? Mm, I would say like 19 to 21. 18 to 20, 21. And how long did it take? To fall in love. Honestly, five weeks. But also, you can fall in love with things in a split second. Yeah, the, the number says roughly about roughly about eighty eight days for men and roughly about four and a half months for women. But it's a biochemical reaction. It comes and goes. It yeah, comes and I believe goes. love is also a choice. But, but I want to ask a question. Uh, what did yeah. your what did you you went to college? Yes. Did you graduate? Yes, in twenty twenty during the pandemic. <laughs> All right. What was your degree in? Mm, culture and politics. Say again? Culture and politics. So nothing. It was like an independent study. So nothing. You have no, 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 no. So you have no, you have no real mark. You have no real cultural politics means that in this in this world, competence gets compensated. That's not worth a lot on the open market. It's not no offense, ma'am. It's just it's not. Oh, none taken. I really enjoyed what I was able so, to do. So, 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 mm-hmm. the question was going to be, if you want to be married, what do you plan on doing for a career? Um, I consider myself a creative. I just want to continue to lead the life that I've been able to lead so far. Your mother and father have paid for that. And scholarships. Yeah, but you got to pay for your own. Yes. You still living at home? For now. Yes, of course. And do you have a job? Yes. Where? Um, Baltimore City. I teach ESOL to students who are learning English. Okay. So you have a degree? You have any student loan debt? No. All right. So your degree is in 
in what we consider almost like humanities. What do you plan on doing for a for a profession? Um, I think like if I can answer this as honestly as possible, I am thinking through that right now. It's odd. I didn't mean for this to be about um, career and working. Uh, I guess matter it kind of doesn't. Like it doesn't matter what you meant for it to be. It's my show. Oh yeah. Fair. That's how this show works, ma'am. And see, the the part of the issue is. You ladies, you, you you have what you want from what you want. Eventually, it's from a man. You want to marry someone. You want children. You want to have your own and adopt one. And the way you're setting your life up right now, ma'am, is how who's going to carry the financial load? And what I'm hearing is you're not really setting yourself up to be a a really contributor. That's why when you said you want to adopt a kid, I was like, hmm. Because what I'm getting from you is a man's going to have to be the majority breadwinner because you're not you're not making any bread. Why is that important? Because if a man's going to be a majority breadwinner, he is not going to want to adopt a child when he has a functioning wife and a functioning uterus and womb. Doesn't matter whose kids are available out here. And why is that important? Because without him, your plan doesn't work because as it stands right now, Young lady, you can't provide for yourself and you have no plan for that. Mom and dad are doing that. Why is this important? Because modern women are allowed to have an elongated period of time to where they don't have to grow up. This is like Peter Pan for girls. To where, yes, there are kids that need to be adopted and all the other kind of stuff. But at what point do you guys grow up and decide to be, you got to grow up at some point and decide to kick in and be a functioning woman? In order to find be found by a husband. Understand. See, what we do a lot of times, guys, I think a, a lot of middle class families got to realize that we're raising our, our daughters to be just kind of nice people, but it's like, all right. These first world notions, adopt a kid, because there's so many kids in need. Ladies understand something, understand something good. Anytime a man is going to have to put some money out, he's going to want to see his own face looking back at him. He's going to want to see his own face looking back at him. And if, because adoption is damn near a step kid. All right, Grace, let's go on mute. Oh, your camera's not on. Your camera's on, Grace. Let's see if we can uh, go ahead and get these folks to. All right, Grace, your audio's not on. Boop, 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 boop. Your audio's not on, Grace. Ashley, unmute yourself. Hello? Ladies understand. Ladies understand. Ladies understand. Ladies understand. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, you have to cut off YouTube, the TV, all that stuff in the background. Because we're getting all kind of background noise. Hold on. SIA, go ahead and turn your camera on. Or I'm going to ask you to leave. Ashley, unmute yourself. Yes, let me turn my volume up. Sorry, I am not good with technology. Okay. How old are you? How old are you? <clears throat> can you hear me okay? I can hear you now. Okay. How old are you? I'm sir. I just turned 34. All right. Domestic or stray? What do we got? I mean, I wish I could hear you better. Well, I don't know. I... <sighs> I would say that I would fall in the stray category, but. Okay. Are you having problems with the audio? <laughs> yes. Now I uh, can't see you. I live way out in the country where I don't have like any uh, signal, but. Um, all right. So what else do you, you fall into a stray category? Are you married? I, I, I am engaged. Okay. Uh, my, fi my fiance 
uh, told me about you and I've been watching your videos for about two weeks. I really like them. Okay. Um, but I've always been in relationships like back to back. Haven't, I wouldn't say trouble finding a guy, but it's hard for me to move past the being engaged to actually getting married. How many times you've been uh, engaged? Well, I was married when I was 18 or 19. Um, well, I was 19. And since then, I've been engaged probably twice. Somebody dropped to their knee, presented a ring of significant heritage in public and proposed to you? Yes. And you accept it? Uh, I, I did. It didn't last. It didn't you know, who work out the last two times, who, but I am engaged who, now, this time. Who ended it? The first time you were engaged, who ended it? Who ended it? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. That's hard. We were both like a tornado and a volcano. We no, just it's really not. Really One really of y'all, who did you get the ring back? Yeah, I gave the ring back. All right. The second time, did you get the ring back? Yes, I gave the ring back. I don't feel any need to keep it. It's not mine. They got it for me. We're not getting married. So, All right. so you ended both of those because you gave the ring back. All right, so you're engaged. Your boyfriend told you to watch me stray, having problems getting past engagement. When's the, when is your wedding date? We don't have a wedding date. We got engaged like a year ago. And Why don't you have a wedding date? I don't know. Because um, you're not really engaged. We, we fight a lot. Because um, you're not really engaged. We, and that's why you don't have a wedding date, because you're not really engaged. I mean, we're supposed to be. We just uh, haven't engaged. had a conversation. No, there's no conversation. See, after engagement starts wedding planning. Yeah. Um, You've been engaged for a year. Yeah. How many, how many venues have you looked at, even online? None. You're not really engaged. You prepared to get this ring back too? No, we're still yeah. together. Okay, well then what are you going to do to get down the path of getting past this stage? I'm going to have the that's, hard conversations, like Kevin. That's what that's what I'm struggling with. Um, Why we fight a lot? He's he says that I'm dominant, and I know I'm stubborn and dominant, and okay, I'm well. I'm open to change though. But by the way, well, you described being astray. I kind of agree and kind of don't agree. I would say like one of you're, my you're dominant needs about what you're dominant about what. Let's let's back up. You're thirty. How old? Thirty four. Any children? No. You have a degree? No. I went to college, but all right. So, what finish. do you do? So, what's your profession? Uh, I work in behavioral health, um, a, a community sports specialist, so like a caseworker. So, administrative kind of stuff. Uh, it's more so like social work. Okay. Uh, not exceptionally high earning, mid 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 tier, mid tier, middle income. No, just like middle middle class. All right. Yeah. So where do you get off being dominating as a high school graduate with a middle-class job? Personally, I think um, I've lived with my dad my whole life. My dad's in a wheelchair. I've taken care of him alone since I was six, kind of having to tell him what to do, how to take care of himself. Is that, are you still doing that now? Yeah, I still take care of him. He lives right by me now. All right. Um. I don't know. I've kind of just been on my own, took care of myself, always but, had a job. But man, um, you've always had a job. You've had to work. I get it. But you've been engaged, what, going on four times now? Three times? Yeah. This is the third time? Third, third time. And you've, been, and you've been married once. What happens if this doesn't work out? Um, go back to being single and living alone. I don't... I mean, I already do live alone. I'm just, I'm trying to work on myself, trying to work on what I can do to, to make a step forward to be how about, a good wife. How about, be, how about be cooperative and appreciative that somebody is willing to deal with you? 
Fam, you're 34 years old. You have run smack dab through the wall. You don't have any more, you don't have any more um lives left on the machine. This one doesn't work. You are all the way in no man's land. On the verge of 36 to 60. No children. And a history of not being able to cooperate and finish. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah. All right. If now I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter. But do you? Were you raised Christian? It doesn't matter one way or another. Either you were, or you weren't. I was. De- uh, yeah, I was. All right. So, if God came down and tapped you, or sent an angel and tapped you on the shoulder and said, "Hey, Ashley." This guy right here, the one you got right now, is the last one I'm ever sending you. After this, it's done. You get no more for the rest of your life. Do you think you'd start treating him different the next day? Yeah, I definitely would. Then why don't you go ahead and uh, start acting that way now? Because what you're doing is being entitled, combative, and difficult to get along with. You're lucky you got a man who's willing to put up with you who's been you said it. You've been engaged twice and married once. That's a lot of miles. He's willing to put up with that. Can he at least get the damn cooperation? Because what's the alternative? Not cooperate? And it, it ends up falling apart? You want to be back on the dating scene? Entering your 40s? Not really. We're just both really stubborn. And I'm yeah, like, let's his- do this. And he's like, let's do this. It's hard for me to be submissive. I need to learn how. I don't know how to be submissive at all. Okay. I'm just realizing that. Well, are you are you are you submissive in the bedroom? Are you on top? No, I'm I'm usually on bottom. Okay. Well, go out. Are you still? Are you in the? Are you in the United States? Yeah, I live in Missouri, way out. In oh the country. Jesus! Oh, that's there. You go. Thank you. Thank you. Because if you actually had to go in one weekend in the in the dating single scene, you have a different appreciation for your relationship. Because, ma'am, honestly, you don't want to be out here. If you got somebody who can tolerate you, you're stubborn, he's stubborn. But if you guys lived together and there was a bump in the night, who would have to get up to go check it out? He would. Right. So he would have to be willing to die for you. You just got to listen to him. Do this. Take a list and start writing all the things you appreciate and value about him. Write a list of how he makes your life better. Then on the other side, write the things uh, that get on your nerves about him. See which side is longer. If the one side of the list is longer, the the things you appreciate, then the things get get on your nerves, then shut the French toast up and get it moving. If the other list is bigger, then have that conversation. So at least he can know the things that bother him. But oftentimes in this country, especially first world countries, you ladies make mountains out of molehills really not real issues they're just personality quirks and issues he's not is he cheating on you no he he's not cheating on me is he bringing uh, is he brought has he brought has he got anybody pregnant no we don't have any kids no no does he now has he gotten anybody pregnant no no so he has no kids no, has he brought no, you any kind of std not that i know of what has he brought you any kind of std no then you're winning Write the list, be thankful, draw him a bath, make him a sandwich, and then drop to your knees. Okay. Okay. Woman, get back in here and make me a sandwich. Yeah. Yep, go have lots of sex and appreciate the man you have because you don't want to be out here. Can I not make myself clear? Have a good night now. All right, thank you. Bye. Seriously, man, you ladies... A lot of times, a lot of times, ladies, you 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 tend to you tend to take shit 
that you got a man and you and you and you take it for granted. Asia, we're back. Oh, Jesus is late. I'm running behind. Asia. Hello. Uh oh. Now we're back. Twenty nine years old, right? Yes. And where did we drop off? You wanted to be married. You wanted children, right? Nick's the kids. I'll take one if it happens. But one. Why just one? Uh, who's going to take care of me when I'm old? One is bad. One is one is one. Look up only child syndrome. I grew up as an only child. It's not really. It's not pleasurable. It sounds like it's a personal problem for the kid. I need somebody that's going to take care of me when I'm 80, 90 years old. Oh, so you're selfish. No, 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 no. I, I mean, that's just the natural state of things. Who's going to take like, care of you when you're old? You mean the kid? The kid is going to take care of you Precisely. when you're old. You're saying that who's going to take care of yeah. you when you're So it's the child's responsibility to take care of you when you're old. Right. That's just culture. Uh, then three kids could do it better than one. Yeah, but financially speaking, you know, kids drain your pockets. Unless you have a way of making money off your kids. Like, so you have a, a so home business. You don't want to have more children because of the financial responsibility. Yeah, it's a huge financial responsibility. Right. So, because you're planning on doing a 50 50 type marriage. Yeah. I mean, I make enough to where I can have a kid on my own. But like I said, I think when two people come together, they should live off of, based off of one income, save money. Use oh, that that's too. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I get it. Um, but have you made any allowance for the fact that the guy you're talking about may want something too? You're saying the guy I'm talking yeah, to. Yeah, he has a, he has his wants too. Yeah. Most guys don't just want one kid. That's understandable. We'll find a way to make it work. It just has to make sense. It just has to make sense. If my husband thinks that we can afford two kids, then we'll have two kids. Well, how much, I mean, you don't have to be exact, but how much are you earning approximately? Um... Oh, my mom's not watching this. She's always trying to figure out how much I make. <laughs> Are you making more than fifty thousand dollars? Yeah, more than that. Less than eighty. Plead the fifth. All right. If you're making seventy-five thousand dollars or more. And the top fifteen percent of men are earning seventy-five thousand dollars or more. Depending upon where you live. If you're both fully employed, that's $150,000. That's You can have two kids on that. See, I'm going to tell you, I need you to know a secret. What you're talking about, somebody's going to have to take care of you in your old age. That is a yeah. burden for one person. Having to take care of a father and a mother? Um, I, But, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah. I would hope to marry someone older than me so I can take care of them for long enough that you know once they pass on my kid won't have to worry about taking care of me well and when was the last, your longest relationship um this is gonna sound sad but like consistently without breaks it would be a year there we go I knew there was a, so all this is theoretical for you at almost 30 years old you really don't have any relationship skills um yeah, I would definitely say I've been sheltered and I'm completely lost as far as dating. It's been a whole bunch of just, not a whole bunch, but it's been like trial and error for me, unfortunately. So, but you know what you want because you've been able to play the simulator that's that the simulator that's Asia, but you haven't had enough experience on playing a two-person game. It's different. Mm -hmm. The theory goes out the window because you're dealing with an autonomous person who wants things. And generally when a man looks at a woman and he wants to marry her with a 50 plus percent divorce rate in this country, men, the motivating reason for most men for marriage is legacy. One child does not necessarily 
a secure legacy. Most people want two or three kids. Okay. So I'm just saying that, you know, I get what you're saying about the money and such and so forth. And if you're both being, if you're, I mean, and the average, you know what the average nuclear, the average two parent family in the United States makes? Um, it's, less, it's less than $60,000. It's, it's actually less than $60,000. That's insane. Yeah, well, then that's the point. So you got to ask yourself, what's really important? Is it living at your current standard of living, your current lifestyle? Because most single women are living far above their means, far above what they necessarily need to do. There are a lot of things to readjust because at the end of the day, your life is about relationships and life is about people. And if it comes down to money, that's really that's that's a masculine kind of mindset too. That's well, mm -hmm. it's also why well, it's kind of different to hear a woman say it's a masculine mindset. But I appreciate it. Get out there and yeah. date some more. Get you some practice. Uh we'll see what's out here. Honestly, uh, well, what do you great. think is gonna happen if you don't? Um, I'll be what's old and alone. <laughs> yes. Do you really want to die, buy a dog yeah. and die alone? Um, I have a dog. Do you really want? Okay, I don't. You know, y'all say that <laughs> shit. Go visit an old folks' home and listen to a bunch of eighty-year-old women who have actually died alone. Y'all, y'all say that like it's easy. Y'all have no idea what y'all talking about. All right, we're gonna bring everybody in at the last minute. So we got a bunch of people in the Zoom room. So whoever pops up first. Uh, everybody's got the camera, but nobody has the audio on. So, yeah, only child syndrome, you know, stray or do, stray or domestic. One thing about this whole stray mindset is it's a selfish mindset. And ladies, the whole question about how long does it take you to fall in love and this and that, it's really to get you back. That's, that the simulator that's... It's really to help you get back. It's on playing and... It's really to help you get back in touch with your feminine core. It's really helping to get you in touch with your feminine core. So uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, Grace. Normally when a man... Hello? Can you hear me? I can now. How are you, Mr. Samuels? Good. How old are you? I'm 46. All right. Domestic or stray? What do we got? I'm definitely domesticated. Okay, go ahead. I'm I'm de I'm dom domesticated because I was married for 14 years. I was mm -hmm. raised with two parents, and I saw the role of a man and the role of a woman. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have strayed so far away. Hello. What? The Hello, Grace. I don't know what just happened. Okay. Something's going on here. Uh, iPhone, unmute yourself. Hello. Okay. Hello. All right. What's your first name? Can you hear me? Yes, I Asia. Can. Okay. Asia, how old are you? Yes. 26. All right. So, domestic or stray, what do we got? Honestly, I think uh, stray, I would say. Uh, you you have any children? No, I don't. You want to be married? Uh, yes, I do. All right. So what's going on? Uh, well, I kind of been single for 26 years. Uh, 26? Yeah. Uh, 26? So, you haven't dated in 26 years? I did. I, I have dated before. Um, it never goes anywhere. A lot of times uh, the guy wants something and that's not the same thing that I want. So I, well, I mean, as I'd long as you've no. ever dated. One date. <laughs> one date? Not even multiple. Yeah. What do you mean he wants something that you don't want? How can you know that in one date? Well, it's usually sexual. Um, the conversation turned sexual before Are you a I even get there. Oh, no, not at all. I'm not. You know, hold we on, can have hold a on, sexual hold on. Pump, 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 pump the brakes. 
the conversation, you're not a virgin. No. But the conversation turns sexual. Yes. Let me get on the camera, on my phone. Do you do realize, you do happen to realize that you should not be going out with a man on date one if you are not sexually attracted to him. You do realize that, right? Yes. All right. So the, why do men date? To find someone, of course, that they're attracted to and to be with. Dating equals porking. Men date for sex. Okay. Gotcha. So it's not as natural and normal if you're going out with somebody you're sexually attracted to and presumably he's sexually attracted to you, that the subject of sex comes up on date one. Unless you're going. Uh, okay. So why does it not get to take date two? So even if it does get sexual, I, I don't mind that. We can continue that. But if that's all you want and you can't hold a conversation mm-hmm. and that's all you base a conversation off of. Okay. Uh, I often hear women say this, that um, you don't, that men seem to only want sex and that's a problem. I said it earlier, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to flip it up. Have you ever made, you ladies need to make room for the possibility that's all men perceive that you actually bring to the table. I mean, um, when I talk to older gentlemen, it's a lot different. The conversations are a lot better, but uh, guys my age, that's where the conversation lands. Well, but... The, the point I'm saying is men talk about sex. See, it's always like a, be- a negative on the guy. And if you can't get past date two, for how many, for, for multiple guys, the problem is not the guys. Yeah. I mean, but that's also what I'm trying to figure out. So I've worked on my, well, I've been working on myself 26 okay. years. So I haven't just been doing nothing. I didn't say you time. were. I'm just saying. I'm saying that this is a common refrain in modern dating. The guys seem to just be sex, sex, sex. Well, if you look on, what's the modern woman really selling today? Do, do most women sell femininity? No. Do they sell uh, wifely skills like being able to be a good uh, homemaker, a cook, uh, a good keeper of a home, a good mother a good raiser of children no most women are selling sex long eyelashes weave long fingernails overly sexualized that's what most women are selling so you can't be mad that that's what men are buying yeah but it, you know i'm not the same as every other woman of I course get it. you know we have to go based off of the majority so what do you think the problem is the reason you can't get to date too if sex, if, if wanting to have sex is not a problem. Well, me personally, well, I recently went on a date two weeks ago with a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the date went very well, but it, it got to a point where he he wanted to see me like the ne- my next day off and I was okay with that. But then he was like, yeah, I want you to be my other half. And, you know, we can just, you know, and this is after the first date. He's like, um, Poly you know, I re- some sort. Huh? He wants you to meet his other half. Yeah, his other half. So another woman. I I believe so. Okay. And uh, so you know, with that, and I was like, you know, let's slow it down a bit. Let's at least go on a second date. But I'm willing to get to know you, and definitely. And you know, even then, he was still pushing. Like, okay, I want to see you tonight, and you know, it just got even uh, faster and faster. And I'm like, uh. You Where know, are you I meeting think these people? Slow it down. Where are you meeting these people? Uh, a lot of times online dating. Um, man, look, man. I know. Look, okay. You're meet. You're going online, and you're lamenting a hookup culture, and that's what online dating is. Okay, it that, is. That can't in be my no information. Area. I don't know. I don't want to hear about your area. There are human beings everywhere. 
Is I guess I was going to say, I haven't been able to find the guys that, you know, I prefer in my area. What do you mean? Guys you um, so mean like, what? I guess, um, you know, the guys, um, they ha- the people around me have a certain kind of mindset and they're guys okay you with, what? you know, guys, you prefer they're okay with what? not getting, becoming educated, not wanting more, not moving up in their jobs, not, they don't have any motivation. Okay. And even I, I do, you know, go right, hold on, out hold on. What into state the are you in? Meet- what state are you in? I'm in New York. What, New York City? Uh, no, upstate New York, uh, capital. Albany? Yeah. Man. Come on. I can't meet a guy who wants to, to, to be a professional in Albany? I've tried. And even in person, I, it just, okay, I can say I've, for a long time, it was about my self image, but yeah. I recently realized that I do have to take, of course, better care of myself if I oh, want right. to attract certain Thank kind you. of guys. There we go. How so tall are I you? have, how tall are you? I'm five, seven. Dress size? I am 220. Your, your dress size? Uh, Mm, um, I'm between size. Certain areas don't fit in in dresses, so I'm between sizes. So I don't really have a dress size. Yeah, I guess large. It's it's not. All right. So the yeah. reality is, ma'am, let's be realistic here. The kind of men you want, or talk, kind of men most women want. Upperly mobile, progressive guys, educated guys. Yeah. They don't tend to want women who are your height, your weight. I know, and I've been. So, I was so, so, I was so, 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 the problem's not the men. The problem is you're relegated by your SMV. To dealing with a lower caliber guy and online dating sexual experiences come on if we flip the script and 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 had a man with low uh low value status he would have some of the similar experiences you can't meet somebody in public well no because the first thing in public, what do they? What do men do? They see the physical. If you were going to say you were two sixty, well, and why is that important? Because you you can't start with the problem is the men. The problem is is always with us as people in the mirror. Well, what? I didn't say the problem was the men. I I was saying that the problem is. Apparently, I've been too picky with the guys. You've been too picky? I guess so. Um, yeah. I would I, I, I would assume. I've been told I'm picky. Um, me, personally, I don't think so. I honestly you just... You're you're picky by like, whom? By friends. Mainly. Female friends? Female friends, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're too picky because you want what a guy who respects me who's um you mm. know you know just simple things i just want decent human uh compassion deter- i guess how can, how can you determine all this in one date well of course i talk to these guys we just don't go on one date at first and i would like but they to- disrespect you Yes, in certain ways. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this has been one of the strangest calls I've ever had. A woman who self-admittedly can't get past date one, who's not a virgin, who's who's uh, presumably has sex, has even talked about being open to a threesome. But, uh, I, Oh, no. When I say his other half, he meant like other half of himself, not like 
but he was trying to. I said the other uh, half. I was very clear about a woman. I, when I said the other half, I said his other his his wife or whatever. That's what somebody means. The other oh, half. No. I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. No. The he said his oh. other half. He's like, oh, let's go on a vacation and stuff. All and right. you know, okay. he was just kind of okay, moving. Okay, all right, moving too fast. Mm -hmm. All righty, ma'am. Um, I'm confused. And when I start to get confused, my bullshit meter goes off. Bottom line, uh, the kind of man you want wants something. Okay? That's understandable. I mean, everyone and, wants and, something. And, and, yeah, the kind of man you want wants something. If you're too picky, fine. Ask yourself the question, are you what they would pick? I mean, I'm... Are you what they would pick? I should be. I'm a great person. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know maybe uh, 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 Great person presumes that's bullshit. We don't pick people because they're great people. Are you what they would pick? Yes, if they got to know me. Yeah. See how we do that? See how they, they can't be honest with each other? They got to know you. That'd be like a guy saying, you, if you got to know me, you know, it doesn't matter. I make $40,000. I'm a great man. I mean, well, when other people tell you you have great qualities and you would be yeah, a good women, person for women, anybody. Women tell you this? Women, other men. Yeah, women, women, aren't dating, no women aren't dating you. Women aren't dating you. And men often tell you things to make your, your feelings feel better. I'm just going to be hardcore now, ma'am, because you're not okay. dealing with reality. 26 years old? Yeah. 26? You're way too much. I know that. Well, then you got to act, you got to move like it. You weigh twice as much as you, if you were 160 pounds, you weigh twice as much as you should. If you're 120 pounds, 220 pounds, it's still too big. And the problem mm -hmm. is, if you, online dating is crap for everybody. So if you're relegated to online dating, you're already fishing in a garbage can. And if you can't meet the kind of men in person, it's because you're not their SMV. So saying okay. that you'd be nice, such and so forth, that's not how my, men's minds work. So you can, y'all can cut all this foolishness out. Drop the weight, get in shape, get out and get out there and make a better case for yourself. And with that, all it, that's all it takes, just lose some weight and... I don't know if that's all it takes, but that's where it starts. You want guarantees, ma'am? Here's the guarantee. Keep doing this. See where how, how's this going? I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits, you name it. I get tired of y'all asking, is that all it takes? Like, y'all want guarantees. It's the sexual marketplace. It is blood sport. It's blood sport. It's kill or be killed. Okay, all is so fair in I, love I, and I, war, right? Mm, then, get out there and get, then get out there and get competitive. Right now, you're not at your fighting weight. Unless the unless the fight is sumo. I gotcha. All right. This is what happens when you overly coddle women. And they've been told it's all, yeah. No, 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 no. Domesticated women have no problem keeping men. Men are looking, men, with, with, here's the funny thing. If you've ever met a woman or know a woman who's a girlfriend type woman, men swoop to lock them down, swoop to knock them down. Men who are looking for a relationship, they'll be like, oh, you met her? Yeah, man, we went on, went out on one date. Yeah, I'm, I'm if, you are, if you know a relationship kind of woman, they, they have no problem. They got lots of girlfriends around them because the girlfriends are leeching off of them. And they got lots of dudes in the friend zone waiting to get promoted. And then the guys they're dating are trying to lock them down. But learn something from them. And what do you tend to find? Fit, feminine, fully cooperative, submissive. No kids. I didn't, they don't all, they're not all uh, models. They're not all, eight, they're not all eights, nines, and tens, but they are a comforting place of inspiration to a man. 
And when men who are looking for that find it, they realize how rare it is and they try to find it. Let me give you an example, ladies. Uh, you look, you know how valuable a Kelly or a Birkin bag is, whether you have them or not, you know it. You know, you, and then you walk, you happen to go by Hermes. You drive by Hermes one day and they, and somebody's, and you happen to walk in because you need to get a bottle of perfume or something. I don't know. And they got a Kelly bag and, it's on, and they, they got it on sale. It's available and it's $100. As soon as you find it, it's real. Even let's even let's even say hundred. They say five hundred dollars, five hundred. As soon as you realize it's it's on sale and it's real, and you verify that it's real, you look at the tags and everything. Else, once you realize that it's it's real, you would do. You gonna be calling whoever. You are gonna be asking your friends. Cash at me twenty bucks. You gonna get that five hundred dollars to get that. You're not going to leave. You gonna sit there and hold on to that bag like this until. You get that five hundred dollars because it is such a good deal for such a value. You're not gonna leave it and put it back on the shelf. You're not gonna take the risk of some. I'm gonna put that back because because everybody else is looking at that same bag. Y'all know y'all don't understand what I'm talking about, guys. Trust me, the women know what I'm talking about. Y'all are gonna pick that bag up because that's how men are when they find a woman that's a good relationship, a good relationship prospect. But women who aren't good relationship prospects. They're all sitting on the shelf, people picking them up, putting them back, carrying on. Learn from the women who are relationship prospects, ladies. Learn from ladies who are relationship prospects. All right. It's been good. It's been great. Wednesday night, we're going to talk about how to, like that wife school is on down the line. I'm a firm believer today, you you ladies who are trying to get into the dating game to you ladies are going to have to figure out a way to send. We're going to have choosing signal class. You ladies are going to have to learn how to send the right choosing signals to the kind of men that you would be interested in them approaching you. How to become better quarters, daters, flirters. I don't know what the title is, but if you'll see it, you'll see the funny thumbnail. And you'll be, and honestly, it's what's going to be required for a lot of you ladies to end up going from here to there. Because the modern dating environment is, you got a lot of men who are like, I'm not cold approaching anymore. Because like it or not, it ain't about being alpha. It's about you ladies are going to have to start putting, you're going to have to start anteing up. You have this foolish notion that if he's a real man, he'll approach. High value men, alpha men, they don't approach their status, who they are, draws women around them, and the women make it very clear that they're interested. Shout out to Alpha Male Strategies. Choosing signals, ladies, we're going to, uh, ooh, y'all going to want to be here Wednesday. Y'all going to want to be here Wednesday. Bring your notebook. And bring uh, your money for hit the cash app and the super chat. I'm teaching Wednesday because the, the dudes you want, because I'm going to tell you, a lot of high value men, alpha males are like, man, whatever. And they also, you're going to also have to, you're going to have to choose. Pimps up, hoes down. You're going to have to choose. Hey, Mr. Pretty Tony, you know the rules of the game. Your chick chose me. Now, we can either handle this like some gentlemen, or we can get us some gangster. We can either handle this like we got some class, or we can get us some gangster shit. Ladies, you're going to have to be like China. What was her name in the movie? Y'all going to have to learn how to choose. Does everybody need an interview to get with you? Nah, nah, baby. You know, ain't nothing like that. Then I choose you. Yes. Shout out to Book Around. Shout out to my uh, homeboy BOA. Y'all keep y'all gators on their neck. You better recognize. You better recognize. Till next time. Peace. We are gone. Come on. What happened? I'm a PhD.
the refresh button. Cause I'm addicted to the good life. Yes. Yeah. Leave the way. I follow. No need to say. No. Where we are heading now, babe. I follow. To the edge of it all. To the edge of it all. So tell you. Nothing can stop me.